Splatoon is Nintendo's take on an online multiplayer shooter, and it was a major hit, becoming one of the best-selling games on the Wii U. And with the hype of the upcoming Splatoon 2 story mode, I thought, why not go through Splatoon's original campaign again? So here are the top 10 stages out of Splatoon's single-player campaign, and bosses will be included. Starting off this list, we have Unidentified Flying Object, which is the first level of its type. The concept behind this level is very clever, especially how you have a fight with the Octa Striker at the end when he was targeting you through the whole level. Plus, this level takes the tutorial stage and actually makes it a challenge, which is also pretty cool. Layer of the Octoballs is just an overall fun level. It's got basic, yet good level design, and it's also got some pretty challenging wall climbing sections, especially if you decide to skip the final checkpoint and just go to the end. Which, by the way, it is possible. I've done it before. All of the Octoballs stages take place in a multiplayer stage, and usually, the harder they are, the more challenging and fun the stages are. Octoling Assault is the second best and second hardest Octoling stage, in my opinion. And it also takes place in Black Valley Skate Park, which is a pretty fun stage to have this sort of player versus horde mode. This stage is fun indeed. Splat Switch Revolution introduces a great mechanic called Splat Switches. When you ink these switches, they change the platforms you are on, whether by rotating them or by moving them completely. It's especially funny to see Octotroopers standing on the walls of the blocks you traverse on. Sadly, this is the only stage with the splat switches, but it introduces them and shows them off in a fashion that's really well designed. The last Octoling stage out of them all, Octoling Onslaught, is the hardest, and that's not a bad thing. In fact, it's the opposite. The difficulty is what makes this stage really good as you're faced with a literal onslaught of Octolings, and you feel your blood pumping as you take them down one after another. It's a great stage. Rampaging Octoworld is one of the only Splatoon bosses that actually requires you to ink up a good part of the arena, and it's an awesome boss fight as a result of that. Plus, the ways that they make this boss fight more difficult are clever too, as it gets harder and harder to ink up the arena so you can take down the boss. Octo Snipers are my favorite enemy in the single player Splatoon, which is one of the reasons why I like Octo Sniper Rampart so much. To add on to this, the level design is also really good, and the shortcuts were even added for the more experienced players. These shortcuts are pretty tough to pull off though, keep that in mind. The Ink Rail is one of the best single player mechanics Splatoon has to offer, and Ink Rail Skyscape is where these Ink Rails truly shine. The level design in this level is really fleshed out, and it's just an overall fun experience. Now, people are speculating that there will be no ink rails in Splatoon 2 since the reveal of the grind rails, which seem to be taking the place of this mechanic. However, I really hope this is not the case. Don't get me wrong, I really like the grind rails, but the ink rails should be added as well, so they are also a great feature that should not be excluded from the sequel, especially since they were shown in early footage for the game. We can just hope. Now, why did I put Unwelcome Flying Objects so high, you might ask? Well, first of all, it's a really good level. The atmosphere on the Urgent Underpass really makes it feel like a new stage, and the difficulty is that at the right level, where the level is both challenging and fun at the same time. Secondly, this is the only level in single player mode where you can play on the non updated version of Urgent Underpass, which is the reason for a level to be on the top 5 of any list, since Urgent Underpass is one of the best stages in the game. Yep, y'all saw this one coming, didn't you? At number one, we have Enter the Octobot King, which is definitely one of the best final bosses I've ever come across. The music in this boss is bloody awesome, the boss itself is really cool, and the progression of difficulty, as well as the use of almost every single mechanic in single player mode, really gives the boss the greatness that it has. And that's why Enter the Octobot King is the best stage in Splatoon's single player campaign. There's my list, guys. If you like this video, then make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and tell me down below what your favorite stages are. I'd love to hear your opinions. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See y'all next time. Realm Gaming, over and out.